Welcome everyone, this is Scramble from Emotional Crypto Trading and today we're continuing our video presentations with Bitcoin and Ethereum technical analysis, news of the market and the most important details for our consideration of the upcoming period, right? Because great things are happening day by day and we definitely need to know about them. We've got a 24 hours volume for the BTC which is above $10 billion dollars that I like to specify and note out, which is amazing. And that pulls the market up above $30 billion, 24 hours volume, which is another great fact. Even though there is no high volatility, we can see that the volume has been increasing dramatically from $14, $15 billion on average per 24 hours. Today, we're just averaging nearly $30 billion for the last weeks which is awesome. Even when there is no volatility within the market attention, this is a very, very important thing to consider because when there is volatility and the market spikes or crashes, numbers are going nearly $40 billion at this time, which tells the fact that there is a 3x increase in the volume from November, December until this month of March. Actually, end of February, March, volume have been spiking for 2019 and we can see how money comes into the space from a direction, but also places a, should I say, selling energy from the other side of the space. What matters is that we're taking to the next level week by week and that is going to be reflected on the prices as well. When things are going to spike, we're going to enter in a bubble once again and the cycle is going to get started. Things will settle out pretty nicely. Just be patient and wait for that moment. That's what we have to do. On the other side, we have to communicate the results of the crypto space, of the blockchain and everything that is going around it by contributing to bring value. That's our task until that. Right, so today we're going to talk about all these things which are pretty much important for the crypto space, including the technical analysis and some of the news. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll start quickly with the news to introduce ourselves in the environment and then do the technical analysis. Right, so we've got first the NASDAQ powered EU digital exchange called DX Exchange, which adds tokenized ETF. Now, this one is a digital asset exchange. And it's the only regulated exchange which offers stocks and ETF. They got a new app on Android and iOS out there. And DX Exchange is allowing people in March to be used without any sort of transaction costs or any sort of monthly fees. It's totally free on March. Uh, they're using a NASDAQ's matching engine as well. And you can read a lot of the things right there, specifically on this page, uh, which is presenting a new type of exchange out there on the market. This is something I'd like to underline, uh, which tells us about how the industry is developing to a new level. Crypto powered Brave browser is starting to pay users which are watching for ads. Now, Here's another way for people to make some money. Some of the other browsers are showing you a lot of the ads without paying you anything, right? That's something we can see everywhere. That's something some of the social media websites are doing. And we have the other party which made the choice to share some revenue with their customers, with their consumers. That's one way to do business. Now we see that how this new companies are starting to share their revenues, which are collecting from the users, which are watching all these ads, of course, and they have the option to get paid. Bad is implementing all these things. They also got up on uh, Coinbase. Uh, their price jumped pretty hard. It says 12%. It's actually a little bit more. Uh, an increase in the price due to the fact that they're up on Coinbase as well as they have launched what they have promised in the ICO, if we remember. Institutional funds are coming in. 
Fidelity's digital Bitcoin BTC service goes live with select clients. Now, this pumped the market in the last, should I say, 12 hours. This one pumped the market and it's the great news of the weekend. Fidelity's digital Bitcoin is going live. They have announced this and it's right there for a select group of eligible institutional investors, which is something normal. The firm is starting out with a Bitcoin custody service focused on the needs of hedge funds, family offices, pensions and endowments. Right. So uh, the main point behind this is more than the technical side and the way they handle the starting point is how we're advancing with the promises that these big companies are doing and which are actually happening as well which tells us that this guys is a serious industry it's no longer a joke where the ICOs are scamming 90 percent of the people and they're just claiming things which are never ever happening we've got real companies here involved although the some of this uh, regulators are scared about the fact that you can promise and you can't deliver that's how the blockchain and crypto space work well it's not like that we can see we've got a bunch of companies out there starting from top 10 cryptos listed right here which are delivering plus others as well which are coming externally within the blockchain having other um, activities in other institutions and other parts of the industry they're coming into the blockchain and delivering on their promises which speaks about the high seriosity level the seriousness and everything that's behind a, a such an act of promising and delivering you know there's a lot of the people still being afraid of the crypto space and blockchain industry uh, like it would smell a scam you know it's, it's pretty much uh, clear where we are and what we have to consider. On the other side, we've got Starbucks, which wants to offer uh, coffee against BTC. But the taxes disagree. We've got here uh, tax regulations in the United States are still blocking the way fulfilling that promises because they have mentioned they definitely want to introduce as fast as possible the possibility to buy coffee or any other service at Starbucks with Bitcoin, which is great news out there. Uh, Crypto Spring Bloom's Bitcoin transaction hit highest level in 13 months. That's true. We can see that very, very clearly within the 24 hours volume. It's happening. It's $35 billion and we have a high level of transactions as well, not as uh, quantity of transactions but also as quality which is a lot of the money involved and that's beautiful we just have to wait for the moment until the selling and the bearish energy stops acting and they will release the market towards to be controlled by the bearish energy that time things are going to spike today we're going to continue talking about the technical analysis and let's do this BTC paired up with a US dollar two hour candlestick Bitfinex. What we have here since the last time we spoke is an important situation that talks of this massive rejection of the bull market. What I'm saying of the bull market is that the bull market is causing this massive rejection because it's happening against the bear market. The bear market, they wanted to push the market down and start another crash right and the point it was somewhere around here they, they wanted to push the market down to retest 3760 levels around that range they did want it to test that and the bears did not permit it although they pushed the market towards from there until the 4000 levels slightly above 4000 for bitfinex exchange keep in mind that some of the other exchanges are having a price of 3850 at this time so this difference in the prices are quite big between the exchanges nowadays. Uh, there is a important resistance zone appearing very, very close to us at 4,050 and 4,100. But in that range, there is previous activity which also represented resistance. But now we're activating as resistance once again because the market is trading below. And this is something we would have to consider for our reference. Again, 
we have great news around the market. Development is going on very powerfully. Things are moving. And the movement from the technical perspective is on the right side. To the right side. To the right goal. To the right direction. That's where we're moving with all this development. And of course, implementation in the real world, which is happening. Right? So the adoption level is increasing day by day. It's not decreasing. Even we've got these governments uh, talking about the high risks behind a crypto space and blockchain, we see real companies out there which are looking to work with uh, real companies from blockchain without being afraid of what the governments are telling them. Uh, there is a reason why the governments, some of them of course, are still watching the crypto space uh, by putting it in a position of high risk. They're watching like that, which in my opinion is no longer available, is no longer real, feasible. Blockchain industry is something, but the crypto space and pricing, if you guys talk about that thing, well, it's still high volatility because of the volume. The volume is still very low. In order not to have such a high volatility in the entire space, we need trillions a day. Once we have trillions a day, volatility is going to slow down for sure. So until that, I'm not sure, but maybe governments are still going to say that the crypto space is extremely high risk, so th we don't want to deal with it. We don't want to accelerate the adoption, which makes no sense, because if they accelerate the adoption, there are some ways for them to profit from there as well. It's not like the banking system is losing control because a lot of the things you will have to do through the banking system, even if you use cryptocurrency, there are some things that still needs to be done through the banking system. So it's not like they're losing control and they're losing. They're going to get poor right away. It's not like that. There is a way to mix these two together and get the best version out of it, which is the best thing, in my opinion. For now, until we get a higher adoption, until we get a higher development level, till the time crypto space and blockchain industry can get rid of the banks. For now, I think they have to work together as a mutual contract and find the best version of both. At the time, one completes the other when it's necessary, because one might not have what the other has. And it's important in order not to lose efficiency, Inch that better work together. And there are some case scenarios, some situations, some cases when this thing needs to happen. So that's why we have to be aware. Right, so right now there is a resistance level just slightly above us appearing right there. Uh, but the great thing is we've got this institutional funds incoming from Fidelity's digital Bitcoin stuff that is amazing news around the space and had the ability to pick up some volume and some green movements around the market we can see some of the alts uh, are reaching milestones and they have nice percentages uh, but some of the alts are averaging around one to two percent profit during the last 24 hours due to the fact that we've got great news for this weekend which is beautiful by the way btc dominance have decreased two or three percent than the average which tells us that the alts are developing as well not only bitcoin uh, comparing to the Cryptocurrencies right here at the top. We've got 2,101 cryptocurrencies listed on CoinMarketCap. And if we cut out BTC, then we have exactly 2,100 alts on the market, which are all against BTC. So, of course, it has $11 billion volume for 24 hours. Things like this are not going to get crashed that soon. And, of course, we're building momentum. Imagine the fact that when we start spiking, things will look pretty crazy in my opinion. Market is going to heat up and we will see again months where we can make 100x on ICOs or on projects which are sleeping monsters at this time. There's a lot of the alts out there which are representing high risk. They did lost a lot. Uh, they did suffer a lot. Uh, they made people lose 98, 99% of their investments. That's true. That's the difference from all-time high until now. 99.6, 99.7. There are some alts going like that, which is tremendously high. I do agree with that. It represents insanely high risk. That's true. But attention. 
before the last bull run, we had some of the alts in the same situation and they were going 500x. 500x. At the time, the company behind that altcoin is seeing the market moving, they start working. They start putting proofs. They start sharing what they're doing and they start developing. They start employing people knowing there is a bull market ahead. Right? So the market adapts and the crypto space adapts to the market. Don't be afraid about those investments which are 99% down from your original cash because there are still probabilities for it to get back on track. It happened and there is high chances to happen once again. Great. You know, we can't say 100% anything. That's why I'm not saying when I'm making these calculations anything and I'm not pronouncing on 100% because I would sound pretty stupid. Great. Going towards, we've got Ethereum today as well. Bitfinex 2-hour candlestick, important thing going on over here. Alts have done the same movement, which is beautiful. So you see, the market is following BGC and it's going like that for the last, I would say, 14, 15 months following BTC. The only time the market didn't follow BTC was where, when we were within the last cycle and we had the alt spiking while BTC was crashing or in the opposite version. But that's more than 15 months since now. We've got this massive rejection and this is the reason why I'm saying this. It's appearing right there. The bull market is rejecting the bear market. So that's great. But attention, this type of rejections happened in the past as well, in the past 15 months, time that represented a downtrending environment. So if we have a few days, a few days in a row or two weeks that are representing a positive movement, it doesn't mean that we broke out important price points and we're no longer in danger of an upcoming crash. Right. So it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean we have entered in a new cycle that fast. In my opinion, it's still very fast to say that we're about to get into a new cycle, considering the last one and considering the current situation in a progress line from A to B, considering the distance from A to B from the starting point till the ending point of a cycle. I do believe it's too fast to say that we're about to enter in a new one in a new very powerful one. So we have to be here and expect new data that tells us how close or how far are we from the new bull run, which could change in a few weeks or in a few months. Great. Uh, remember that the market is continuously telling you information. You have to be aware about those. You have to read the charts. Once you read the charts, you know the language that it speaks to you and you can start communicating with the market. Beautiful. $166 resistance line is sitting at the top here, which is still there. So even if we have two days of nice movements, 166 is still going to be there representing danger. Great. You see this zigzag movement? Now that zone right here between these two guys, 150 resistance and 145 resistance right there. So that zone, that entire price zone is representing resistance pressure in my opinion. Uh, you see, we have to break out of that, find some support if we're touching it, and then try 166. This story is pretty difficult for now, considering there are three resistance lines that you have to break through. Definitely very difficult. Uh, you need, at some point of the market, a high probability which represents a sudden increase in the bullish volume. That is the only thing that could break through all this three. If there is a sudden increase in the bullish volume, we have this ability. If there is no, then unfortunately, the chances are very, very low. Great. On the other side, we've got 125 support line, which is sitting pretty nicely and it has a lot of the confirmations. This is a crucial one. Previously, it did act as resistance, uh, but even this resistance was right here forming a nice pattern ready for the breakouts. You see it, it looks something like this. Market have moved and then it spiked up. This is what happened here. 
the best part of it you have the lows which are building higher levels constantly and the top that is fixed and it's not really building higher or lower tops at all now this pattern is on every 75 percent going bullish which also happened uh, previously we also had movement if we'll look back it's happening and it's going on from both sides depends where the market is trading if we go lower we have to expect a hundred dollar that represents double support at this time we also have levels of 80 bucks support but that's quite far away from the current price and from the current situation right so that's pretty much all about today's video presentation hopefully i made it as straight to the point as possible there's a lot of the things that you can learn from here in my opinion which are benefiting your trading experience and journey this is the most important thing out of the news that we have covered today is we were able to see that there are some governments telling us that the blockchain space the entire crypto space is representing high risk even today while the companies are very serious in delivering very serious in introducing adoption among their users very serious in offering security and very serious on delivering promises so where is the high risk the high risk is just around the prices which are representing high volatility and the high risk is also compared from the fact that the blockchain industry is not having a long history it's not having that time that they say it's necessarily to be spent around adoption development and testing implementation testing right they say you need some decades before you can introduce it into the medium or low risk category without any sense in my opinion to say just like that as soon as the results are going faster i think you should check once again the level of risk of this blockchain industry and crypto space and declare it somewhere around medium no way this is a high risk industry only if you joke with those little projects which are ha having you know faces that are kept hidden and false scamming type of profiles which can be found in the ICOs but let me tell you another thing we can't just name the entire blockchain and crypto space after a few ICOs we can't just drag the entire space because of the few ICOs out there which are still scamming and I'll tell you what there's going to be scammers even in 25 years from now within the ICO sector. They will scam people which do not want to put in efforts into getting informed. You have to pay some efforts. You have to spend some time, get informed, and you're not going to get scammed. Before doing these things, you also have to build a logical machine that runs the research process once you have that logical machine of research process you just put it in action and then you save money by avoiding high risk projects by avoiding risky projects and you go with the ones that are having high probabilities for you to make money attention not even the ones will guarantee a hundred percent return on your investment not even those ones but the probabilities are very high and if you keep working around high probabilities and avoid the danger zones you will be the winner for long term that's what you should aim you're not here to make money for the next 24 hours or 12 days or six months we're here to make money that's going to be enough for generations beautiful that's pretty much all about today's conversation feel free to hit that subscribe button next to it you got the bell which notifies you whenever i'm posting hopefully you got some great content out of this and we believe we got a lot of the great things to share with you within our next videos thank you so much for watching and we'll talk to you soon